We weren't. Oh, is it gonna work? Hello. Here we are. I'm gonna show you what I'm going to do today. Welcome to Deanne Fitzpatrick, Thursday Live at Deanne Fitzpatrick Studio. And we've got so I've got so many things to chat with you about today. I have so many. Angela and I are cooking up some new ideas. We're changing, we've been changing things here a little bit. And I'm just gonna give you a little rug tour of the back studio here while we get ready. Welcome Susan Doyle and Pauline Peaver. Hello, Mazin. Liz Belbin. We'll just have a look at these rugs while we're starting out. This is the blueberry fields. Carol Brown is here and Terry Murphy Fetzner. Oh, this, this rug I made a long time ago, but I still really, really love it. And then I've got this one here. These two, I think are really, I, I love the rich greens and blues. I think the color is very unique in them. And the hot pink outline on the right one. I actually use that. Hey, Mazen. Hey, Kirst, Kristen and Ingrid. show you this we just put this one on the website for sale the other day and uh hi lise and betty decat from kansas is here and carol beaton from benoin cape breton i don't know if i'm saying that right benoin i think so and uh this rug over here it's a beautiful rug and it's gonna go to the beautiful inn in fogo island and been after there it's a portrait of my mother um, and it's about the uh, moratorium and the fishery and uh, we're just getting my mic ready here and Greg's out here hello David Kish from sunny New Mexico aren't you lucky and here's our ferns which leads us to what we're doing today um, that's gonna be I put another fern rug on I really 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 like this rug and I love the image of the home and and everything in it but I really 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 want to just do something with just fern so I got myself a skein of woody moss and here's my red rug and I'm gonna go right in on that for you oh I can't go in too far because it starts to blur hi Janice Buckingham welcome from Pennsylvania and from Linda Borey from Oxford Massachusetts hi Haley Perry how are you Haley has Loop by Loop Studio in Mass in uh, near Rhode Island, right near Massachusetts, right on the border in Warren, Rhode Island. And Linda Cullum, hello from Newfoundland. And this is called Up North. We just put this on the website too. And this one has been with me for a while. This one right here, and it is um, it is. Uh, I don't know what it is. It's tulips and sunflowers and maybe whale tails and maybe salt fish. And uh, that's the story. So I'm going to go in here and I'm going to show you some things. I've got a pile of things I want to show you. I'm going to pass it over to Angela. And we uh, made a mistake and I don't have my mic today. So I'm going to speak really loudly. Is that right, Angela? I left the mic on last week. And so it's not charged. Um, so today, well, we have a couple of different things I want to show you. So the first thing I want to talk about is this rug that you can have a look at it here. And it's just a bed of ferns. So all summer I walked up and down the road and I, and I looked at these ferns. And, and now I'm looking at them all sort of disintegrating. And I'm thinking about how beautiful they were. And so I'm going to hang on to summer by pulling, uh, pulling this, uh, uh, pulling uh, the ferns out of my memory and it sounded like I was going to pull it out of somewhere else didn't I? <laughs> <laughs> anyway I'm <laughs> going to pull the ferns out of my memory and uh, and I'm going to decide what colors they're going to be and it's just going to be fern upon fern so I'm tightening up my frame here those of you who have a, have a shanty camp know that, that you, when we talked about that last week, if your frame is loose, if, if the linen or burlap on your frame is loose, it's much harder to hook. So we really want to have a nice taut frame. And I just want to say thank you to those people who have been sharing um, the videos with other people. 
because you just don't know what people need. And I know, I know I say that every week, that you don't know what you're sharing when you're sharing raw cooking. Um, a young woman interviewed me for a podcast. A young woman from Utah interviewed me for her podcast. It's called Folk Lake. I don't, I don't even think it's up yet. She's a student, and she visited Nova Scotia. And she got me thinking. She said, is there anything else you want to talk about at the end of it or you want to say? And I just think about the woman who taught me how to hook rugs. Her name was Marion Kennedy. And I was going, I was in Tatamagush, and it was a weekend of the Nova Scotia um, uh, Rug Hooking Guild. And she just taught me that one stitch. And when she taught me that, and that woman I only encountered four times in my life. The time I learned how to hook. About 10 or 15 years later, after I'd written a book, uh, Kay Purdy from Truro brought her to visit me, and she brought me... Um, a beautiful antique rug hooking frame because she wanted someone to look after it for the next years of her life. And then years later, I went to visit her. She was in a nursing home and she didn't know me. And then, and I brought my daughter with me and I remember my daughter was like, why are we here? But that woman had such a profound impact on me from just teaching me one stitch, right? And then, uh, and then I went to her memorial service. And those were my four encounters with her. Two, really, because one, she didn't know me, and the last one was her service. And that woman uh, made a huge, huge difference in my life. And because she made that difference in my life, I've been able to help other people and teach them. And I think that we make a difference in other people's lives. I want to read you this letter. I got an email last night. I got two beautiful emails last night. One was from a woman uh, who had been struggling with some health issues and was talking about how important rug hooking was to her. And um, I didn't ask her if I could read the note, so I'm not going to. But this one is from Andre Benson. And Andre usually watches every week and says, Hi, Deanne. A couple of months ago, I introduced my cousin Danielle to rug hooking. Danielle lives in Saskatchewan with her husband, children, and seven grandchildren. Her mom, my aunt, lived with Danielle until a few years ago when Alzheimer's took its toll and she was moved to a long-term long care facility. Sadly, a few weeks ago, my aunt passed away. Danielle was very close to her mom and she misses her so much. Danielle has been following you every Thursday and it really has been keeping her spirits up. She loves your positivity and creativity. Last week, she asked me if I could help her design a rug that would capture the things her mom loved, sunsets, the oceans, and forget-me-not flowers. In memory and honor of her mom, she'll be hooking this rug. I'm sure it will bring her joy and perhaps a little peace to work on this rug. When it's completed, I will ask her to send you a picture. I like that. I like it when people send me pictures. I wanted to share this with you because you say, when you share rug hooking, you never know what you'll be giving someone. We're grateful for what you do, DA. Thanks and many blessings, Andre. So that's what I'm talking about. You know, I'm talking about uh, that it's more than just it's it's more than just a craft. It's it's uh, an opportunity, and I just want to keep reminding you of that. Now, um, and so please share. And and you know, if you don't feel like sharing this on Facebook, share your talents. Teach somebody one other little soul how to hook a rug and even if they don't keep at it they know that they have that craft that they can always come back to okay so please share what am i going to do here all right so i had this idea of all these colors like i thought because i just outlined my trees from my blueberry fields i just outlined them in um in red and so i don't know we can go out and get any are we able to go out to the front. I went the other day and it was fine. We never got cut off, but I'm afraid to do it on a live. I'm afraid that we'll get cut off. What do you think, Ian? Don't do it. I don't know. No. I don't know. You don't know. We could try. Any chance. <laughs> I really kind of want an evening in the garden, so I'm gonna run out and get an evening in the garden. Oh no! You're gonna leave me alone. No, I'm not. <laughs> I'm gonna put this up over my head. So I still get nervous. I'll be right back. Okay. Greg and Trish are doing something here. I'm not sure what, but it could be for something upcoming that could be really special that I'm not allowed to talk about. You can show them your dance moves. Oh, oh thanks, Greg. No. <laughs> you can do a little dance this week. Greg. Oh, he's hiding from me now. So Greg and I, we didn't have a chance to dye anything this week. 
Uh, so hopefully we'll have something. We haven't had something in a few weeks, but hopefully soon we'll have something for you. Yeah, there is a big surprise. I'm back. Okay, sorry about that, you guys. So I found an evening in the garden, which is a great yarn. However, I'm afraid that if I use it, I wanna use a lot of lime and a lot of gray in this. I'm afraid that if I use it, the limes are gonna get mixed up with the grays. Um, this is one of our artist series. It's a really beautiful yarn. I think I'm gonna outline in the plum. So this is something that you need to think about when you're hooking rugs. Here's your lesson, okay? So I'm gonna tell you something that's important when you're color planning. So if you're doing something else other than hooking, come back to me. Like if you're playing with your phone or whatever, like I do. <laughs> Um, uh, come back to me. This is important. So if you are thinking about a foreground and a background and it's going to be outlined, you have to pretty much decide the tones or the color. So if I use this as a, the problem with using this as an outline is that it has like a, what color would I use inside? And that would still stand out. You know, it has so many colors in it that it's going to compete. So I'm gonna go use this as an outline because it's good and deep, but it's not black. Then I know that my ferns are gonna be these mid greens, okay? So I have to decide on my ferns. So they're gonna kind of be the kind of mid greens that I used before. And then I know that I want some gray in that background. So the three colors, have to contrast with each other okay in order for them in order for them to stand out you can't like if I if I unless you want a really subtle um, exchange right if you want a really subtle not exchange if you want a really subtle effect sorry so um, if I say for example if I did this color on on the um, on the leaves and then I outline them in this color. It's gonna be very subtle and it's gonna be hard to distinguish. So I, I'm starting off and I kinda of want some freedom of choice as to what color goes in there. So I wanna make sure that I outline my ferns in a strong color that contrasts with the green but won't compete with the background. So I'm kinda of thinking that the background will sort of be undergrowth. So this is not what I want, even though I thought I did. I want, what I kind of wouldn't mind is just these shades in here, and I could cut those out if I wanted to, but I'm not going to. I'm gonna leave it, put them back out. So, I also have this, which is our, oh, I'm not even sure what that one is anymore. Okay, so I could see here again. Not enough, I think it's just gonna get it's going to get lost. This would be okay, uh, some of it in the background, but like these combinations are, are okay. They're really strong, but they'd be okay. Oh, that red shouldn't be there. So you got to start somewhere. So I'm going to start with this plum. I'm going to make sure I don't have some cut off already. Oh, that's, that's good. Right there. I have other plums. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to outline all of these ferns in plums and I'm not going to do all the same plums and then I think there's going to be wines and grays maybe in the background maybe not just gray I'm, I'm struck on this tote too I haven't given up because when I did the last fern rug if you go on and online and look at it I used a color like this with the greens it was great and gray but I, I mean I'm not I, I want to do the same theme but I don't want to do the same rug all over again right I want to come up with something I want to come up with a new combination. That's part of the fun of hooking, is coming up with those new combinations. Just put my hook here. Okay, got a hook. There's my hook. There's what I want. So, on the weekend, I told you about this basket that I made and going to see Cora and, you know, just sitting down and resting. So, what I want to do is I want to fill this basket with some little treats and um, I want to send it to somebody. So 
Uh, this is my little basket. Now to say that I made this basket by myself would be an utter lie because uh, the woman who, who did it with me, Clara, 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 Gal, I said Cora, but Clara, uh, m helped me make it so much. She did so much of it. So, and Martha, who I spent the time with. So, and Martha's her sister who was there helping me. So I want to fill this basket with goodies. And this is how you get uh, to be in the basket. I just want you to share the video and I'm gonna fill it with some, I think some Sari silk. I'm just gonna take like a little bit from my stash here, some Sari silks and just do you up a little bundle. I want you to share the video and tell us that you shared the video. Or if you don't wanna do that, tell us that you're gonna teach someone to hook rugs in the next couple of weeks and, and, uh, and write it down in the comments and we will fill this just a small little basket, but it's made out of maple. It's all split maple. And uh, so it's really, really beautiful and it's hand, handmade by me and Clara. All right, so do that. And I've got Clara's cards here, I'll put in the basket. So now uh, we've got two different colorways going on here. I've got to cut my skein here with this purple. You know, I keep losing my scissors. I have a nice big set. Sometimes if I lose my scissors, I just stick my hands down here and I find them. But I have one set that's been missing for a while. This is the black handle scissors that I like so much. So I'm just cutting up this purple. So do I know what color direction I'm going in? No, but if I'm going to outline this, this is the lesson. Once you choose that main outline color for a design like this, you are choosing a path. And there's all kinds of colors that are not gonna work that well with this because I chose that color. So you have to really know that that's what you want. So ferns start off like this. There's the leaf at the top is a small leaf, okay? It's just a small leaf. A lot of times you wanna see it, even when I drew it, I drew it wrong, I drew the big leaf. And the fern down the stem is important. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hook the stem double and maybe triple as I get down to the bottom. So right there, I'll leave it single and then right here, I'll start it double. This is the stem of the fern, right? Cause I want you to, I want you to feel it, notice it. So I'm just doing one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, and it won't be perfectly straight. Now for this fern, what I'm gonna do is this fern here, I'm gonna outline all in this color purple. And then another fern, I'm out, I might outline in another, in, an, in another, well, they're more, they're purple, aren't they? They're, they're plummy purple. But would you say they're purple, Ange? Yeah, they're pretty. They're like a plum. They're like a plum. Yeah. yeah. I kind of think of purple as kind of more sort of harsher a little bit. These are not harsh colors. They're soft colors. So the lesson this week is your outline and your foreground. This would be your foreground, the leaf, and your background. They all have to work together. They're, you know, that's probably the most important color decision that I'm going to make in this it's really the only color decision almost I'm going to make in this particular rug. But every time you add something to the foreground and you outline it, you have to consider what the background is going to be because that's going to tell you if it's going to be like really subtle or if it's going to blend in and you're not going to notice it. So I'm going to just keep working away on this. And I got a few things to talk to you about today. So what's the name of the plum yarn? Uh, this this is a Briggs and Little. Mm, was, it last, was it Mulberry? Uh, I think it is Mulberry. Yeah, Mulberry. I think you're right. Yeah, it's Mulberry. Um, it's a great outlining yarn. Another. Uh, we used to have one time. I had a couple of bolts of eggplant cloth, and I used that a lot for outlining. So the ferns, I don't make exactly as they are. Like obviously, I can't do you know like a fern leaf 
every leaf has the little edges and I'm not able to do that because I'm hooking the rock. I'm not, you know, doing a realistic painting. So that's different. So there's three things I want to talk to you about today. Four things that I want to go over. First of all, our calendar is out for 2021 and the calendar uh, together with Harry at Acadian Printing, we put together this calendar as a community project, as a community fundraiser. There, we're both like feel very lucky to be doing the work that we do, and we live in a community um, that we have many people working for peace and prosperity among everybody, and so we are just um, selling as many of these as we can, and then we give all the money away. We pay Harry for the, he pay, gets paid for the cost of the materials, and, uh, and of course we pay for shipping, but they're 25 bucks and all the profit from the calendar goes to community projects. Last year we donated to the Hospital Foundation, we donated to some mental health projects, we donated to some autism projects, we donated to, um, uh, oh, let me think, the youth, the local youth group, like it's just all kinds of different things. And, and this year, together with the staff and together with Canadian Printing, we'll decide what to do. Um, and so that's available on the website now. I know a lot of you have ordered it for many years. Well, I've got some exciting news. Will you want to tell them about the webinar? Oh, yes. Okay. So it's not on the website yet, but it's going to be on soon. And we're going to do a two-hour live workshop in studio on Saturday, eh, Ange? We are. Yeah, we are. We never did it before, so we're going to try <laughs> it. And so I'm going to go through the whole, I'm going to hook the whole rug with you or go through at least the elements of the rug. I've also recorded, um, uh, uh, the. I'm going to hook the rug twice, right? I've recorded it once so that you can have it just in case something terrible happens with the live, which we don't expect, but we're really, you know, ready. And because uh, if it happens, if something goes wrong with the live, we'll just set up another. It's going to be on Zoom. So we'll have like a limited participation when it comes. I don't know how many we'll be able to take, but um, this is the image right here. And uh, yesterday I was calling it Winter Escape, but to me, it's Christmas morning. Isn't that Christmas morning, you know? I don't know, kind of thing. That's our, or Christmas Eve, or Christmas Eve. It's like, I don't know, it's like, it's a winter escape. And I guess that's what it makes me think of. So I'm thinking we'll do this around December 3rd. On a, I think, is that, is that December 3rd or Saturday? Oh, sometime in early December, we're going to get together. And we'll do it at about like 11 o'clock in the morning so that if you're, if you're out west, you can join us. And it's live. So the whole thing is live. And it's, if you can join us at 7 in the morning and, or you can join us at 4 in the, after, uh, or four in the afternoon if you're in England or something. And I've hooked it once, and it looks kind of like this, but I haven't got a frame or anything yet. So don't judge it too harshly. But this is what we're going to focus on is we're going to focus on hooking sky like this, hooking a tiny house and doing details, little trees, and mainly we're going to focus on hooking snow. So that's going to be fun to do, and that's coming up soon. So are, are you interested in that? Does that appeal to people? I'm curious. Are you interested in me doing some live workshops over the winter? Um, they will be priced at about uh, at forty nine dollars, I think. Eh, Angie, you will get the pattern with that. We will we will send you a downloaded digital pattern, and uh, like I'm just tempting you now, but I'm curious if you're interested in some two hour live workshops or if you're interested in an online studio retreat, things like that. I'm wondering if you're interested in those kinds of things. So just put your comments down there and let me know. Because if you are, uh, we will do them. What's everybody saying, Angela? Oh, we're getting some yeses. Getting some yeses? Yep. Good. I think it'll be great. I think, you know, we'll do a two, it'll be a two hour workshop and we won't be talking about, you know, the yarns in the studio or anything like that. We'll just be talking about the project and it'll be, won't be quite start to finish, but I'll be doing every part. Well, that one actually probably will be pretty much start to finish. I don't see why not because it's about the size that I can do in a couple hours so what we'll do is we'll send you a link beforehand um, so that you can join in the thing uh, in the uh, webinar and the live webinar and we'll also send you uh, maybe days beforehand eh? a few days beforehand we'll send them a link to a PDF of the pattern so that they can trace it on their own linen so that's our plan and then Will the fabrics be included with that, Deanne, or just the pattern? Well, it'll just be the pattern. 
yeah, right. that'll be the. Okay, I think we're good to go Thanks. again. So we had a little technical difficulty there, sorry. Take you a minute to get back on. People on? Or? Yep, they're coming back. Yeah, great. So I'm just gonna keep hooking here. So that's one of the things that uh, we wanna we wanna do um, is have some online live workshops and webinars over the winter. I want to tell you about Tawny Landscapes. I know you can't take it now; it's too late if you're not in it. But my gosh, it's been great. I've been watching the Facebook page of the Tawny Landscapes, and people are making gorgeous rugs. So, um, and they're framing them and getting them on their wall. I mean, some people have made eight or nine. Uh, it's incredible, isn't it, Angela? It is, how and beautiful. Many, how many people are making? So we got cut off there earlier, but we'll leave this. We'll leave this up for you today. Uh, the second video. I probably won't post the second video on, uh, we'll probably just post the, the main video on our uh, on our YouTube and our podcast. So um, anyway, anything else today, Angela, we need to talk about? We talked about the calendar. If we, we said some comments. If you share and tell us, then we'll send this basket off to somebody. We'll just pick it randomly. I just go on and close my eyes and scroll through. Um, anything else I missed? Maybe the harbor? Oh yeah, that's right. We are gonna we are gonna reopen the harbor again next year. Um, we're gonna have a, a launch in December. It's gonna be offered as one year, one. You'll get the whole year long course all at once, and you can work away at it. Um, it's, I mean, in the next in the coming months, I think you'll see us posting stories and and uh, uh, notes from people who took the harbor and got so much out of it. It was an excellent excellent online course. And if you're interested in growing your creativity and you want to become more creative in your life, that's the course for you. And uh, so it will be available only uh, between December 3rd and December 31st, I think. I think those are the dates that we're going to go with. So, so the lesson for today was about color and choosing foreground, background, middle ground for whatever item you're hooking. Once you choose that outlining color and once you put... Like once you put two colors in, then you, whatever two colors you put in, you really have to be considering what the background is, is uh, going to be. Because every time you add a color, you kind of limit your choices in a way if you want this to stand out as a leaf. Like for example, I couldn't put black in here as a background now very easily and do what I want to do. Because color is about feeling, right? And, uh, and if you know, if I put black in here, it's gonna be very deep and dark and this plum is not gonna stand out. Just a simple little tip, but it's an important tip and it's a tip that, uh, it's a mistake that a lot of us make, especially when we're just starting out. So I enjoyed being with you today, even though we had a little glitch. Do you know, I don't know what the glitch is. The glitch was that I have a time limit on my Facebook so I don't waste too much time on social media. I wanna, I go on social media to watch what I wanna watch and see what I wanna see. And, um, and I usually have it for like 40 minutes so that, you know, I don't spend any more time than that in the run of the day on it, which is quite a bit really. And, um, uh, so I had that limit on and it cut us off. So there you go. I'm trying to police myself and I'm really not doing a very great job. <laughs> <laughs> See ya. Take care.